Hello everyone, my name is Fairy Balon and this is College Web Media. Today, I had the pleasure of interviewing Cliff DeJong, the founder of CG Services, an Internet of Things consulting company. He also works as a system administrator of a web-based work management software application. Mr. DeJong's diverse insight on printing production, technology knowledge, and IT operations work management has given him the skills and experience in order to be successful in the workforce. Many college students will definitely gain a lot of insight Insights from his expertise. Please enjoy this interview. Can okay. you um, tell me and the audience a little bit more about yourself? And can you tell us also about your educational background? Sure. Um, well, hello, everyone. I'll be looking at notes off to the side. So if, it, if you see me looking off to the side, it's just me reading my my bio. So um, okay. I, uh, I currently work in the technology sector. Um, I work on a work management platform for a uh, healthcare company. Um, in a previous life, um, after leaving high school and college, I got into the uh, the, the printing industry. So um, it's a it's a it's a pretty wide transition going from working from one industry out of high school and college, and then transferring into another one as I as I got older in the in the job market. Um, after attending the college, uh, um, I was looking for work, and um, I got and started in the printing industry for a few decades. Um, and then in 2007, um, the industry took a crash. It was an economic downfall. Um, it was during a really bad era for a lot of people. And um, I was out of work for, for several years. Um, and then I had to go back to school, get trained, to get reeducated, and then transfer those skills into a new profession. And that's where I sit today in information technology. So it's, uh, it's quite a long journey, but um, that's basically how my career has gotten started. I know you talked about um, you majoring in printing technology in college and even mm -hmm. work for many printing firms and companies uh, in the span yes. of very, very long years. Um, yes. Was there another reason why you decided to uh, acquire and transition these skills into information technology other than you losing you know, um, your job and the financial crash in 2007? Mm -hmm. um, well, I've always kind of been an active learner, you know, so I mean, I've always liked the tech as a hobby. So I was always dabbling when I was working in, in that industry prior to me and to being in IT now. Um, but then after the, the main reason was, I mean, I couldn't find work anymore in the profession that I was in. There was the Internet came about, um, you know. The, the revolution of printing has is, is been transformed. Uh, everything is going offshore. Everybody can do everything online. So I, I knew I had to make a move. I, I couldn't I couldn't hang around anymore in the industry. And and it, it, sometimes things work out for those particular reasons in life. And and um, yeah, I was just lucky enough to have that hobby. And then I just built on top of those skills. You know, after I used that that skill that I had from printing, it also involves some of the elements in this other profession that I'm in. So um, after speaking to many counselors and mentors and, you know, instructors and stuff, they said, well, you can always try to do a transition of your skills into, to another industry, you know, to keep working because, you know, I have family and a home and it's education and bills to pay, you know, and um, that's, that's kind of where I ended up when I'm now in IT. So. Right. Um, so we, we've talked about your educational background and you um, graduating from college with a degree. Yes. What do you think is the biggest misconception about graduating from college with a degree and actually going into the workforce itself? It's a very, that's a very, very good question. Um, gotta, I've got to admit, um, during school and attending school, I mean... Um, I think the one thing that people were always thinking about was, you know, I got to get that paper, that, that diploma, that, you know, the, the degree, whatever 
whatever it is, your trade certificate, like whatever, whatever work you wanted to do and you wanted to accomplish something, it was one thing to go to school and learn all the things that they taught you in the schools or the trade schools or in the universities. But um, it's another thing when you get out with mm-hmm. that piece of paper and you go to an employer and you tell them, hey, you know what, I've got this, you know, can you hire me? You know, can you, can you give me work? And um, a lot of times it's more than just the education. It's, it's good for you, the education. Don't get me wrong. But I think also if you're a student and you're going to get work, you need to do something on your off time that helps you build your career. A lot of times on the off time, students do things that waste a lot of their time, you know, uh, gaming or whatever it is, social media. There's so much distractions, you know, Netflix apps. Um, I think if they were to take some of that quality time that they had uh, away from that and work on a skill set that could help them in their work life, spend that time now to do it. It's going to pay off. I mean, to be quite honest, I thought like that a lot growing up as a you know young adult and then into adulthood and, and getting a job. And I thought to myself, I'm always going to make sure like the percentage of time that I spend either playing soccer or riding my bike or going to the movies – I've also want to concentrate on something that's going to benefit me in the job market that I that I'm in. When Cliff and Ferry return, Ferry asked Cliff about a story she heard about him getting a job by walking into the building from the side door uninvited. This interview was brought to you by College Web Mentor. Register now for a free resume and LinkedIn profile evaluation at collegewebmentor.com. Whether you're deciding on a major wondering how to network effectively, or planning your career. College Web Mentor offers a range of tools and services to help you succeed. I know I was told that you once walked into a printing company <laughs> looking for a job without being oh, yeah. invited and you got the job. I was not invited. Yes. I <laughs> Can you tell us about how you made that. that opportunity happen? That is an amazing story. I'm sure. Oh my goodness. So out of high school, I mean, out of college, got, you know, got everything going, got ready to start work and sending out resumes like everybody else going to find work. So and I was, you know, working for a few places. I wanted to upgrade a little bit. So I was looking at some of the larger companies in the area where I live. And I said, you know what? You know, how can I get an edge up on the competition? Because I know a lot of friends of mine that were in school and, and in the industry, they all were looking for that same job. So I was sitting outside of the building once after I filled out the resume and went inside and just dropped it off at the front, right? And she says, yeah, we'll get back with you a couple weeks later, you know, and you don't hear nothing. Months go by, you don't hear nothing. So um, I said, you know what? I'm going to take a leap of faith. I'm going to dress up in, in this gear that I had from a previous work where I looked like an employee that worked there to, to a certain extent. Almost, you know, uh, uh, find a way. And so look around outside, sit around, see doors that are opening, see guys walking in and out of the facility. Um, you know, um, you can do a lot. I mean, back then we didn't have internet and phones. So, I mean, we, we had to call and reach out to places and read magazines and try to find out like who the guys were, you know, kind of even what the people look like, like where you're working, like you can always find some sort of information about them. So I put the resume in my pocket. I walked up to the door on the side of the building. Um, luckily it was unlocked and, um, started to walk through the facility, um, uninvited and, um, Luckily, the, there was not that heavy presence. I didn't cause any issues or anything. But I just, you know, casually walked through and mentioned to one of the people that were working there, looking for the manager of the supervisor's office. And he goes, why? He goes, you should know where it's at. You work here, you know. And I'm like, mm, I'm new here, you know, and I'm just trying to introduce myself. You know, I'm looking for work. And I am I was told this, this, this person or wherever the manager's office, I'd like to deliver my resume in person. So they walked me over down the halfway down the building and on the left and the right side was the office and uh said supervisor on the door you know and um yeah i built up the nerve standing outside that door for like five or ten minutes and walked up and knocked on it and then you know you get invited in and they look at you like you know who's this guy i don't know who he is where'd he come from you know like 
I didn't get a message from the desk at the front that anybody was here to see me. And I went, yeah, you know, I'm sorry about that. I just happened to drive by. I walked in and I'm looking for work. I says, I work in the industry that this company produces. It was a printing company. And I said, I have a background in college, you know, some, some, some great skills. I worked at a few places and, you know, I know I turned my resume up front. You'll probably see it one day. I said, but I'd just like to personally give it to you. Um, so if you had an opening the next time, you know, could you consider me as a candidate? And two weeks later, I received a phone call from that same man. And he helped me get in the door and get me started. And two weeks later, I met him at the front. He walked me through the building and introduced me to the people I needed to know. And I, that was the very first time I knew that getting a job isn't the traditional way anymore. You got to really go out of your way. You know, now I understand nowadays it's tough because, you know, we're, we're in a different era of the world. But still, that same concept, that same uh, method of looking for work, it still exists. I mean, in any industry, you can go to any company, sit outside and watch people come and go all day long. And um, sometimes it just takes that little bit of extra effort, you know to get something good for yourself. Yeah, for sure. That is an amazing story. And certainly you've come a long way from <laughs> walking it's, into it's, building. It's taught me a lot. Definitely right. has. Yes, it has. So uh, building off of that, how did your vast knowledge in printing production and IT operation and technology knowledge in general get you to where you are right now in your career? I think um, I'll, I'll definitely go back to the same point I mentioned before is like when you're when I was always working in printing or if I was even working in IT at the time, um, again, just focus on that that work. Right. How do you go from ordinary to extraordinary? Right. We know we want to become the worker we need to become. And and it's all about thinking, I believe, outside the box and um you know, we've got to put extra effort into things um, that sometimes we feel it's foreign or it doesn't feel right. But um, sometimes those chances will give you the opportunity you'll, you'll never know is there in front of you. And it's like, oh, what if I would have done this or whatever, you know, stop asking yourself these questions. Just go try. You have nothing to lose, you know. Yeah, for sure. Um, so we know this is College Web Mentor. Are, yeah. Do you think? Mentors are important. Did you have one? And uh, if you did, wow. what did you learn from them? Yeah, um, I would have to say along the way, I met people or instructors and teachers and educators, right? Never really thought of them as mentors. But now that I look back, um, they were that crucial piece for me. Um, I can think of a high school teacher. I can think of a college teacher. I can think of... Um, a colleague I work with at a work or someone that always knew or had more than I did, or I didn't know something. So a lot of times, you know, you, you, sometimes you want to go to your dad or your parents, and so, you know, and other times there are other people out there with the same type of knowledge. And um, yeah, definitely had mentors growing up. And, and I think it's very important uh, today for us to do that for a uh, future workforce because, the market's changing fast and it's moving at a pace with, especially with technology, um, you know, getting that extra input is, is a definite key and a mentoring is a great way to go. So. So to wrap this interview up, what advice would you give to college students who want to pursue a career in your field now? Mm -hmm. Um. Well, definitely you can learn the courses, you know, um, either online or uh, um, if you're currently attending a college, it's always great. Study the industry you're going into, you know, um, try to find uh, networking opportunities, those type of things. I mean, I'd still do that today. I mean, I, I will see a company that's offering some sort of function for something that I, I know nothing about sometimes. And I'll just go to just to do that networking. Um, they're available online on a regular basis, like, you know, for certain agencies, they have, they have uh, you know, communities or groups. Um, and if you do happen to come across something like that, it's, it's, uh, it's definitely a great investment for your future. Thank you so much. 
Um, we really appreciate your time you spent with us, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people are definitely going to learn a lot from your stories. <laughs> They're amazing. Thank you very They're much. Very, very interesting. Um, I will update you when this video does get um, uploaded on the CWM okay. YouTube channel, and okay. I will send you that link as well. Sounds so, great. Um, I actually just wanted to clarify how to pronounce your first and last name. Oh, thank you for that. First name is Cliff. Last name is Dijon. And Dijon. your pronouns? Um, say that again. Your pronouns, he, him, is it? Pronounce? I, I, no, I your pronouns. Is it he, him, his? Oh, it's, uh, the pronoun would be him, he, right? Okay. Or he, him, yes. Great. That's correct. Okay. So Cliff Dijon. Dijon, yes. Okay, That's great. correct. Yes. I just wanted the to Dijon, clarify. The, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Dijon, or they say it in many different ways, but Dijon or Dijon is uh, the, the he, him uh, pronoun. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Mr. Dijon, and I will definitely update you. Thank you very much for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you for your time. Thank you again. Goodbye. Bye-bye.